hello everyone welcome to my channel my name is esther asari today i have with me a very good friend he goes by the name tio he's actually called tio filosquashi we've known each other back at the university of ghana doing our bachelor's he schooled in the united kingdom and so i've been asked a number of questions on how to gain admission into public universities abroad and since he schooled in the UK, he is a good person to tell us all that is required to gain admission into in the UK university. And one very important question asked by many, what is life like after graduation? Is it possible to stay in the UK after graduation? What is life like? So Tio is here to tell us all about that. But before we kick start, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Welcome Tio Pilos. Thank you. Yeah, so today we are here to discuss about how to gain admission into in a UK university. And so okay. before we kick start, can you kindly introduce yourself? Who is Tio Pilos Quash? Yes, yeah, so my name is Tio Pilos Quash, as mentioned. And I'm a Ghanaian. I had my first degree at the University of Ghana in BSc Agriculture. And I also read my second degree or my postgraduate degree, master's degree at the University of Glasgow. Okay, so, so at the moment, where are you? So at the moment, I'm back in Ghana working with the Ghana Health Service okay. as an administrative manager. The requirement for gaining admission into any UK university. Okay, so for for postgraduate, the requirement is that you have a first degree. That's a requirement for gaining an admission to any UK university. Okay. But when when it when it comes to scholarships funding, then it means that you have to have second class upper and above. So either first class or second class upper. But once it's lower, you may end up getting a half tuition or you, you have to fund your own, your own education in the UK because mostly they really don't have scholarship that covers second class lower down. So mostly it's upper and first class. So that's the, that's the fact there. And what are some of these scholarships? that are available for international students? Okay, so there are in, in institutional scholarships. If, if I say institutional scholarship, I mean scholarships provided or given by the schools. So mm -hmm. this UK university have their own scholarship, their own tuition scholarship that, that, that they give. But mostly these scholarships are for tuition fees. That's for master's program. They are for okay. tuition. Even if you get them, you have to find your stipend some, somewhere to um, complement it. Yes, that's it. And as a Ghanaian, there are common words, there is a common words scholarship as well that you can fall on and apply. There is one also called Shevney. Shevning scholarship. I think I met some Shevning scholars whilst in the UK who are also Ghanaian. Then you can fall on the um, um, Ghana government scholarship, like the Get Fund, or go to the scholarship secretariat, and possibly you may get funding from those places. But those places are, are, are not secured because uh, there are a whole lot of politics and other other things. <laughs> Yes, I understand. Do you know anything about the Commonwealth Scholarship? Is it a full scholarship with, or is also just for tuition? The, the Commonwealth um, Scholarship is a full scholarship. Okay. That even comes with traveling grants and, 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 and all that. And it's one of the best scholarship that anybody will, will want to have because the package is very, very, very good. The package is very, very good. I'm mm, sure so, it's also very competitive. Yes, sure, sure, very, 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 yes. Yes, yeah, so, so there's common scholarship. The package is very good because you have 
traveling allowance. I think in and out traveling is taken care of. Your one-time travel to the UK mm -hmm. and back is taken care of. It covers your tu um, your tuition fully. It it also has um, um it it gives you a stipend as well. And I think with Commonwealth scholars, they have some programs. Whilst in, in school, there are some Commonwealth programs that they attend, like okay. they, 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 they attend. So they are also exposed to some opportunities as well. So I think with, with that scholarship, it's 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 the package is very good. The package is very good, yes. Then I could conclude that for most of the UK scholarships, the Commonwealth scholarship is the best in terms of the it's package. The it is it, it, it is the best so far. It is the best so far that I have I have come across. But of course, just as you were saying, the the competition, other things are, are very high. So mostly they, they consider first class to them. But you know, once you have a second class and that is the requirement, you can also apply and you may also be taken as well so so my next question is is english proficiency like ielt topel required before you gain admission into any of these universities yes so with the uk university they have english and proficiency requirements but i am how i am however now there are a lot of schools who take the proficiency letter from maybe your university. Once you've graduated and the you, you, your university can attest on your behalf that you've done all your studies in English, there are some schools that, that take. Okay. There are some schools also that take the WASI, the, the, the WASI English that you wrote. So with WASI, if you had, C, C, C6, some um, UK university will use that as your English test and admit you. But okay. if it's essay, then it, it means once you have D and above, they will also take you. Uh -huh. In addition to the IELTS, once you have the IELTS, then it means you don't have to provide any of, of, of these. But if you don't have the IELTS or the TOEFL or the other English tests that you have to sit, and you can provide either your WASI English, your SSE um, English, or the university can attest on your behalf that you have done all your course or your education in English on an official letterhead, then they, <laughs> some university also take, take that one. Mm, so that's it. Which university did you attend in the UK? Okay, so. In the UK, I, I went to the University of Glasgow. Nice. So that is where I had my master's. But I also made friends who were at other universities who in our conversation, we realized that the process through which I came were the same way that they also came. Okay. So yeah, the friends that I made most of them didn't write the TOEFL and other things, but they were there because they were able to attest that they've done their formal education in English. Okay, so it's either you you attend, you come from an English speaking country, then it will be easier like Ghana or Nigeria, then it's easier for you to get this letter yes, from your university. But, but, but the challenge is, even though Ghana is an English speaking country, they don't yeah. consider touch until we provide the proficiency letter or the WASI or the other document. Okay, okay, okay. And so is it also possible as a student to also study and work in the UK? And how so, many hours are you allowed to also work? Yes, yeah, so in the UK, when you get your, your tier four visa, you are allowed to work 20 hours per week, which is a part-time work basis. Okay. So, of course, you are allowed to work as, as, as a student in the okay. UK, but on a part-time basis. However, once you finish your course and you have um, um, some time left on your visa or some time for your visa to expire, maybe five months, six months, 
you can work full time. Okay. Before your visa expires, before you come back. Mm -hmm. So once you graduate and you have you know time on your visa, you can work full time. But whilst you are in school, you can only work part time. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe you can schedule your uh, let me see. Um, you you can look on your timetable schedule and find a job that suits you. Once you can do that, then you are good to go. How long is the master's program in the UK? What's the maximum number of months or years that you can stay? So the, the maximum number of months that I have seen so far is 18 months. Mm -hmm. But with me, mine was 12 months, which is exactly one year. Okay. But there was some who I knew who went in Feb February before I went. But we ended up graduating in the same month which is September of the following year. So okay. I think the, the, the maximum that I've seen is 18 months, but currently a lot is 12 months. Now it's one year, one year course is fine. It's only few that stretches to 18 months. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, um... So what happens after graduation? Is there a possibility to stay back in the UK? Uh, with, with, during our time, our visa really, I think the, they only gave us five months, maybe extra, just to wait, just to have time to attend our graduation. You know that once you finish the course, it takes time before the graduation ceremony happens. So they give you some number of months about five months so that you can stay to also attend your, your graduation ceremony. So that's it. But I think currently I've heard that they are bringing that system back where when somebody finishes in the UK, he has two years post working this thing, um, visa, blah, 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 or the two years post working or, or opportunity after they are done with their master. That was how it, that was how it used to be, but it, it, it was changed. So during our time, once you graduate, that two years was not there. So you were, we were only left with five months or some four months just to give us a chance to attend our graduation ceremony and that's it. But now I understand it, it, it has come back, even though I haven't confirmed because currently I'm not in connection with any UK master student who has obtain a visa two years to confirm that all this thing has already been got back. Mm. Yeah, I also heard about that. I don't know how true that is. But can you tell us about how you gain admission? How was the process for you? Did you go with a scholarship or you were self-funded from Ghana? How was the process? Okay, so so how I gain ad admission. So what I did was mostly I have an online is it an online uh, engine? Is it an online search engine? Yeah. Okay, let, let me put it that way. So what, what I did was that I registered with one, which is the scholarship um, position. So every okay. week, yes, every week they send me scholarships based on the requirements that I have given that oh, I want to do a master's in agricultural science in food security or anything related to agriculture. So once it comes, then I go through, even though it's it's it, it's a bit of work, you have to go through the links that they will send you and also select like those that you you, you feel are appropriate for what you want to do. You also select, then you go through how to apply the documents that you need, you, up, you scan them and upload them on your laptop. If you are supposed to write a personal statement, a motivation letter, whatever it is, you have to write all those things. Yes, and 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 then you can submit an application. But I think with my application, what was a bit challenging was the reference letters because yes, I wanted to come to that. For most is, people, that is quite challenging to get a, a yeah. recommendation or reference letters. 
especially if you yes. graduated years ago. I mean, to yes, get yes. back yes. or contact your professor or supervisor back in the that, university can be problematic. That, that is a very challenging thing to do because to contact your supervisor and blah, 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 you know, now it's sometimes you may not even remember you have to introduce exactly. yourself. And, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and and the issue that to, the issue there too is that maybe the person may even send a reference on your behalf that is not strong. So even though maybe your credentials may be okay, your reference should also attest to exactly. that fact. Yes. And, and that is also not strong then. It can really affect you. So that that is one of the challenging things. But once you have all the other documents and you you can get a reference, if you are working, lucky for you, you can get it from your employer and even your colleagues. Maybe your colleagues, you can get it from them. All you need yeah. is a good one. Somebody can can give you a good re recommendation. Then that's it. You are good to go. Then you submit your application. If it's online, you submit. If it's by post, you submit. If it's by email, you submit. And just be hoping and waiting that you receive an email that will either confirm that they are considering your application or they will schedule, um, schedule you for an interview or okay. some may admit you just like that. It all okay. depends. And uh, all depends on whether the applications for that uh, program or whether they've received a lot of applications for that program. Yeah. Which I, I think with my, even though they received a lot of applications, I happen to be somebody whose qualification actually matches the project. Okay, okay, nice. And, I didn't, with the master's, I didn't go through in interview, even though it was a full. Mm -hmm. So even though it was a full tuition, I, I didn't go through any form of interview. All that I, I did was that my motivation and the other write-ups that you write, you realize that during my application process, they asked me certain things. You have to sit down and write it very well so that and I'm sure that was the interviewing session for me during my application of the master's. And so yeah. with the master, I didn't go through that um, interview. So when they received my application, they acknowledged that they have received it. So I think I waited for almost one month before I had a confirmation that we have been awarded a scholarship for food security, a full tuition fee. Then they will give you the details of the scholarship and how, like, and what you are supposed to do. Then, from that place, you have your student's number. You start your online registration and all other things. Then you also start with your visa application and the things that for you if you want to go. Okay, so in your case, you got full tuition. Yeah, full how tuition. Do you to the embassy that you can sustain yourself when you get to the UK. Okay, so so after getting a full tuition, yes, you have to provide to the embassy that you can sustain your stay in the UK. And that is also one of the big challenges with yeah. some of us who are things but don't have stipend. Mm -hmm. So what I did was that I have to and with, with, with the UK, it's either your biological parents yeah. can demonstrate through their bank account that they can take care of you whilst you are studying. So with that, and I think during my time, the one year stipend should be, I think, 9,800, 9,800, because yeah, I think- No, like that's for, for a year, for the 12 months. Yeah, for the year. Which, so which, if, which, year, on, which year did you go to the UK, if I may ask? 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so by now the, the amount has, has increased because from 2015 mm -hmm. till 2021, 2022, a lot might possibly, have. Possibly. 
possibly, but you realize that with the UK and the other people, their economies are not like ours. So sometimes, <laughs> yes, sometimes, eh, I think I can stay, but possibly, possibly, yeah. in, in my, but during those times, it was 9,800 pounds, and I have to demonstrate. And during that time, it was around 50,000 Ghana, 50,000 wow. Ghana cities. So yeah, so what I did was that I have to call on people to get some money into my account for that 50,000 Ghana cities. And I was able to get some people to give me money to put in my account for a month to demonstrate that I can, you know, actually, because that is the requirement of the embassy. And whilst the money is in the account, you have to do some transactions, withdraw money, deposit money so that they will know that the account is a working account and you just didn't deposit the money and once you okay. deposit the money you remain there for one month one full month for them to see that the money is actually yours okay. so that was what i did but un unfortunately for me the cd depreciated <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> So Can you imagine? the money that I, I, I deposited was not enough. Mm. And once it is, it's not up to that amount, trust me, even if it's left with 50 Ghana, they will disqualify you for the visa. So you have to be very careful. So what I did was that I was advised by, um, by B. CIE. Did, did you find out? Did you? Yes. I forgot. I looked it up. They have mm -hmm. branches in Ghana and in Nigeria. Yes, yes. BCIE stands for British Canadian International Education Limited. Yes, 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 yes. that's it. That's it. So I, 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 I called on BCIE, who is an agent of Glasgow University. So they advised okay. me that, yes, they, they, they advised me that um, what I need to do is to pay my accommodation because mostly once we book for an, an accommodation you are supposed to you can either pay or not pay until you get to the school before you pay but okay. what they did was because i have that challenge i should pay the deposit that that was hundred um, um, um thousand pounds okay that, that was thousand pounds by that by by then so once i pay then it will leverage or it will take that deficit away okay because the 9800 includes everything my accommodation everything so it's it's, it's also part so i paid and after paying i had like then i was able to meet that demand okay then i asked for the visa and when i went to bc i it was free they didn't take any amount of money from me okay i mean they didn't so they so they are just there for consultancy. They will uh, advise you on how to apply for um, probably yes. in UK yes. and so, Canada. Yes, yes. So they yeah. they they coach, but they, they have when you go, they like they look in the list of their institutions whether the school that you are going is part of their because I think the institutions pay them okay. directly. So they, that are ring, but the student doesn't pay anything. Okay, 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 that's good. So that was how it come. Then after paying, then I applied for the visa, and God being so good, I had the visa because I've met that requirement as well. Okay, that's good. Mm. I can imagine the feeling the day you were, your visa was approved. That, it was. <laughs> It was a great feeling. Eh? I didn't know what, what to do. Seriously. Yeah. Um, and so how is life actually as a student in the UK? I think life, life actually depends on the person. Let me put it that way. Okay. Life, life actually depends because I think going there, my experience in Glasgow was 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 a bit free. It was okay. <laughs> I even worked midnight. I work one a.m., twelve a.m., and all those things. And I'm, I'm, I'm because the job that I did, the part-time job, even though it was from 
um, four, I think four to nine, no, five to nine. We have to travel PM. four to nine PM. PM. Okay. We are we, we have to travel to other places in the UK. Sometimes we are in Aberdeen, sometimes we are in Edinburgh, sometimes we are in other places in Scotland. Okay. So then we mostly use our transportation train. Okay. For and so by the time we will, we will close at nine and board a train to Glasgow, sometimes it's around 12. Okay. Off to the train will alight you at the city center. And that is not where my house is, or that's not where my hostel is. So I have to, and by then, by those times, you will not get a bus. Mm. So I have to walk from the city center to my place. And it wasn't that far. Okay. But like I was, even though it was late, and all those things, uh, like it wasn't scary. I don't know how to put it, but it wasn't scary. Like, I understand. Uh, in terms of security, security is good. Security, yeah, and I, I think it was it was okay. That's one thing. It would depend on, on, on the person because I think life there was, was very good. And it was very good. What is the cost of living? Will you say it's UK expensive? I think. <laughs> Seriously, it is not. Okay. When it comes, because mostly it is food that make cost of living very high. But you what about accommodation? Sorry. What about accommodation? Uh, the accommodation is also okay. Okay. For me. Seriously, food and accommodation to me is okay. I think what sometimes. Uh, we consider as Ghanaians is maybe if I'm going to barber my hair mm. or you know my hair, UK they will tell me it's maybe 10 pounds. Okay. I won't I won't barber with it because it is 10 pounds, not because it is expensive, but as a Ghanaian, I've converted the 10 pounds. <laughs> I can relate. I <laughs> to figure so 10 pounds in cities is like let me say. Those times around 50 CDs. That's it. Right, so I should use 50 CDs to just barber my head. I won't do that. So that's the but looking at food and other sometimes you you have an amount of my maybe for me per se, let me say Sandra, I have 10 pounds. Mm. I can shop for a whole week and 10 pounds. I'll not, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll not buy any based on the things that. I will, maybe there are some people who are expensive though, you know, women and their way of living. Maybe some <laughs> people. But, you also shop in but, African shops. Yes, we do shopping. And, and I think the African shops, they are expensive. Very yes, expensive. even here in Germany, it's expensive. Because buying shito, I realized that I went to buy some Ghanaian shito. Even the shito was not nice. But that's the only <laughs> <laughs> that's the only option that um, that I, I I had. Then the 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 shito was, I think around five pounds or so, and it was something small mm, with I, a lot of oil on top. On top, on top. <laughs> you understand? Mm, and yes, with, I do. I, I'm not that type who always wants to cook stew, and you know, even though we are free, sometimes I cook and put it in the fridge and. You know, but sometimes you are you are back from work and you are tired. You just need something to, and so that's it. So the African shops are expensive, but generally life in the UK when it comes to food accommodation, to me, I feel it is okay. Okay, so you can also to, save as a student and probably after graduation get uh, save some money that you can take back home. Sure, sure, sure. And, and it's true, once once you can you can do that, you take a lot of money back. A lot mm. of money back. Mm. Unless so you give me some but so will you recommend others to study in the UK? I would. I I I I I, I would first because now they have all opportunities because now they're after. Um, um, school two years working visa is, is a great or 
opportunity. And I wish during our time, we also had that opportunity. So whilst they are there, they can also exploit other um, opportunities, maybe PhDs, industries, because two years is, is enough time to you know, study the system, to know industries, to know PhDs and other things to also pursue. So for me, I will, I will. Okay, so you being someone who schooled in the UK and went back to Ghana, will you, is it a good recommendation or will you recommend to others that after school go back to your various country and use the knowledge that you gained to support our system back home? Or will you advise someone like me that madam, 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 come back home, come back home and use your knowledge to help develop Ghana? Oh, me, I advise you to um, come back home. You, you know, stay, stay there and enjoy. <laughs> because, <laughs> yes, because the, 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 there are two, um, two things. If you are working already, maybe in the government sector and you are, it's an upgrade. You went to school and you, that one, you can come back because you are working already. You are yeah. also upgrade the master. So once you come, your job is secure, then you are in it. But with some of us who, went without working and once you finish just stay there don't come back home with the knowledge they will even frustrate the knowledge you even forget <laughs> that you have... <laughs> the knowledge you'll be frustrated i can imagine you'll be frustrated so personally unless the person is working that mm. one fine whether industry private public that one if you are working and your job is secured why not come back and come and enhance Ghana with the knowledge that you have acquired. That is better, that is perfect. But if you are just a student who had an opportunity to go and to look at, look for opportunities elsewhere, okay. you know, Canada, Australia, Germany, even in the UK that you are, look at, look for opportunity elsewhere. Don't, don't come back because once you come back, maybe by an act of grace it will go well with the person but currently based on what some of us have experienced mm. they will frustrate you seriously they will mm. frustrate you mm, so so it's better you 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 find opportunities somewhere rather than ghana but ghana they even the politicians they don't know the thing yet they are making policies on that thing and it is frustrating the whole thing so Definitely. Don't try, and you don't try. Thank you so much, Theophilus, for coming on the show. Um, I can also say that most of our mates who schooled in Canada are still there. Even our juniors, they are still there. Yeah. And that's yes. some people are doing so well, both houses and all. And oh. those who went to the US are also there. I mean, they are doing well. I spoke to a couple of them recently. And yeah. I'm also here in Germany. <laughs> sure, uh, last true. time I was in Ghana for four months, and I I mean, there's a lot of, they say it's hot, there is hot. So when someone says it's hot, I ask, what are you talking about? Is this the environment or the economy? And they say both. <laughs> both, both, both. Both. Yes. That's that. Like Ghana, you see, I've, 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 I've always been saying this that it's true um with with during during our our time with the system in the uk it didn't favor a lot of the um, international students mm -hmm. especially those from africa even sometimes the those from the european something something area have mm -hmm. have some opportunities but those outside the EU and the EE something something and the UK, you realize that there are some opportunities that really cuts you off. You okay. don't have access, and you don't have access to it. And even even um, consider PhD funding. They will tell you this is for UK students only. This is for the EEE or EU students. This is mm -hmm. so they they have just cut you off. You understand? But now since there is an opportunity for me. Once people go, they should exploit all avenues. 
-hmm. and make sure they are on top of the opportunity. They should ask questions. They should seek places where they will be advised on things to do, the steps to take. Mm -hmm. First, Charlie, for me personally, coming back to Ghana, if you are not working, it's a wrong idea. Seriously, mm -hmm. it's a wrong idea. You don't need to do that. So with, the, with those of our colleagues, our mates, our juniors, our seniors in Canada, the US, the Australia, who are doing well. I think it's 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 a big plus to them. Germany, like as you are there, yeah. it's a big plus, to them. and and they should keep on doing well. And I've always been saying this that once you you are able to make your name somewhere, you can step in Ghana and just fit in because the name is there. Yes. But if you are Making the name, then forget about Ghana. Don't don't come and make the name. Here. Oh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it, oh, you just gain fit, gain momentum somewhere. If you yes. are a doctor, or, I mean, let me say now, you you I, I get your PhD, you lecture for five ten years, and you come to Ghana, you are seeking for a, a lecturing or opportunity, or it may even be easier for you. Yes, you understand. Yes. I'm not going to seek for it without any, without you gaining. It will be difficult. They will frustrate you. But yeah. once people identify the name that this person has done this here, he has, she was here, she has been in the UK, she has lectured here, it may be easier. So the mm -hmm. advice is that our colleagues who are now going or people who are now going, Charlie, seek opportunity somewhere. Make, make build a career for, for yourself mm -hmm. if you want to come. By the time you come back, you have already built something that will make people identify you. Mm. Then you can fit. But currently, the Amasa, you will not fit in. They will, they <laughs> All will right. Be... Oh, it's true. I understand you perfectly. Well, thank you so much, Tephilos, for coming. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. I appreciate your time and everything you shared with us. All right. Thank you for that. That's the consideration. Thank you so much. Ha, ha, ha.